everyone this is ross In today's video we're going to do like the last little harvest of persimmons for 2019. Uh, this is my rosianca persimmon and it's really tall um, it's only four years old now i think it's approaching 20 feet tall and the rosianca persimmon is a hybrid between the american persimmon and also the asian persimmon and when you combine the two you get different characteristics. One of the characteristics that Rosianca has inherited is actually the size of the American persimmon. So it's going to be a larger tree, but it just in general, we need to be focusing in the future about not fertilizing these trees, not watering persimmon trees. This tree only has about 10 or 12 fruits on it, and it should have close to 200 for the size um, and it really all just comes down to the fact that if you fertilize these things you really adjust the the soil fertility here they love to grow and grow and grow and not fruit and I think also pruning has quite a bit to do with this the different techniques that you guys can use if we if we prune our trees too hard they may also respond the following year with too much growth and um, I'm gonna prune this tree sometime around Christmas, um, mainly because I'm getting a, a book, one of the best written materials out there on growing persimmons. And um, I'm gonna read what they have to say on pruning these before I go ahead with pretty much my, um, my theories on these trees. You know, my theory is that we shouldn't be heading back every branch um, and eliminating these lankier branches. We should be focusing first off, first off on branches that are growing horizontally or even towards the ground, but not heading everything back. If we want to take out, let's say we have four branches here, I'd rather take out one of these uh, completely, bring it back all the way down to here, rather than just cutting them all back to a third or even half. Um, and controlling the size that way, um, I think that's going to aid in getting a more productive tree that's gonna hold on to its fruit. And you know, th this is just something that happens when the trees are young, right? But certainly as a grower, we can, we can impact this, right? Um, four years old, this size, this strong of a tree, it should be putting out more than 12 fruits. Now onto the fruits themselves. Um, as I said, this is a cross between an American and an, and an Asian persimmon. I've been harvesting now for uh, a month or so different types of persimmons. My Americans, um, my Asian persimmons, and they both have different flavors. The, the American really does taste like dates and, um, and, uh, and raisins and has that really awesome dried fruit flavor, some interesting spices. Um, like rum raisin, they're really, really tasty. But then you get these, uh, these Asian persimmons here, and this is also astringent. I'm talking about astringent persimmons. They, these taste a lot like marshmallows. They're very sweet. Um, a totally different flavor profile to them. And uh, personally, I think they're, they're both great. And they, they're own, in their own little equal rights, they're both great. However, I have been told and I've had Rosianca before, but I've been told that the crosses, the American and Asian persimmon crosses have the best of both worlds in terms of flavor as well. So we're going to find out if that's really true. Um, I always thought that Rosianca really represented more of an Asian persimmon flavor. But what's happening right now, and the reason why we're harvesting these now is that we had a frost that came in. You can kind of see that on, maybe you can see that on some of these leaves. Um, definitely a couple of these look, these leaves look a little bit like they've been hit with a frost, but certainly the figs have over here. You know, this is clear sign of, of, uh, of our first light frost. And that frost really helps the persimmon and even the fig I'm finding uh, finish off its ripening. It really speeds up that process. So what you don't want to do 
is get your persimmons out here on the tree and leave them out here on the tree when a, when a frost comes. Because essentially what's going to happen is that they're all going to turn ripe. And you don't want that. Especially if you have, let's say, you know, 200 fruits. It's just an issue, right? They're all going to ripen at one time. You're not going to be able to eat them at your, your leisure in a more uh, a wider window. So as a result, it's just not something you want to do, leave them on the tree. I mean, you can, um, you know, that's up to you. Another thought process here is that by leaving them on the tree and getting them hit with that frost, by that speeding up that process, people have told me with more experience that these trees, the fruits, lose some fruit quality that way. When you artificially speed up that ripening, it's kind of like putting oil on the bottom of a fig to speed up that ripening. Um, you're losing something there. And if it was just slower, if you were to take this off and put this inside and let it ripen on the counter, um, you'd actually get a better flavor. So there's, there's a couple thought processes there differences of opinion and, and whatever it is that you guys want your objectives to be. But uh, that's what we're doing today. So we're coming around, we're getting off all these persimmons. Something you want to do is just be careful uh, when you rip these off because they're very difficult to rip off. I would definitely recommend using two hands <laughs> and uh, try not to break any branches. Although this is really the time that a lot of people will actually prune their persimmons. They'll take off the fruits and with it they'll do some pruning. Um, so that's kind of the last little harvest here guys. Oh and you know one other thought here before I let you guys go. This one's actually getting soft as we speak because of that frost. Um, I don't think the frost hit all of these which is good but one little thought here is that at the very top you can see some persimmons there. And what's really weird about that is that those were really only formed like sort of late in the season. Um, all these other persimmons here that I showed you guys down lower on the tree, that was there at the beginning of the spring when I had my initial flowering process. And those are the ones that just held. But I've got others up here that put out new flowers on a second flush of growth. And what's weird is that I came in here and I actually girdled the tree. I half girdled this persimmon just to see as a little bit of an example. You can kind of see the mark right there. You guys kind of got a glimpse of it just now. But essentially my goal was to girdle this to slow down the vigor and hopefully get it to fruit. And I think it responded after that, if I'm not mistaken, it responded after that by putting out those fruits up there and they held. So I don't know if girdling is gonna help in the future or if this is, it's just a weird anomaly. I don't know, but I've never seen this before. My tree I think did flower last year um, after a second flush of growth as well. So we, we, I did get some flowers twice but uh, nothing held last year. Um, and I don't know if I can make this happen every time, but it'd be kind of interesting, I think, maybe a little interesting little technique or something that you can do. Maybe you have a, a late frost that comes in and that could be the, the answer for certain people if, uh, if that happens to you, I don't know. But it's worth, it's worth noting. I want to thank you guys for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. This is the Rosianca persimmon, the last here of the harvest. We did a video on drying these and tasting these. We'll do one on pruning. Hope to see you guys at those. Talk to you soon. Take care.